Now it's time for the fourth question, and I'm afraid this one is a bit of a pain compared to the first few. It's, I think it's harder and takes longer. Um, so it's about linear approximation and differentials. So just look at A here. It has very helpful instructions to do the following. Um, so find the linearization of this, this nonlinear function f at A equals 16. Let me remind you of the formula. Okay, you need to do so many of these that you accidentally memorize the formula. That's when you know you've studied enough. So L16 of X is going to be, what is it going to be? It's going to be F of 16. So F of A plus F prime of 16 times X minus 16. And maybe I can just figure out what these things are. So... I know what f of 16 is. Actually, this is like something we would do in pre-calculus because it teaches you what the exponents mean. Oh, but I can write the actual number instead of the wrong number. So what is this? Um, so if you think about it, this is the same thing I know. Just, okay, so fast forward through this if you don't care. But look, this is, this is taking the fourth root of 16 and then cubing it. So the fourth root of 16 is 2. Okay, and the cube is left, and when I cube it, it's 8. So this is, what is this? This is f of 16. So I know what that is. Now let me think about f prime. And so what is f prime? Remember here is f up here. So this is just uh, the power rule. So it's 3 fourths times x, and when I take 1 away, what happens? I think I get left with negative 1 fourth, right? Okay. And I also have to plug 16 into that thing. So what is f prime of 16? It's equal to 3 fourths. And now we can figure out what this is, too, because um, James Stewart earned his $20 million house that he got for writing the textbook by making these problems work out well. And so what is this? This means 1 over the 4th root of 16, aka 1 half. So this is 3 fourths times 1 half. And that is 3 over 8. Okay, so now we've got kind of our data, I guess. And we can just write this stuff in. So this is going to be equal to, we know that this is 8, we just figured that out, and uh, plus, now what's going on with this other thing? So f prime of 16 turned out to be 3 over 8. And the, for the last part, it's just x minus 16. All right, and so what we just did here is figure out part A. So very good. And I'm going to move, well, maybe I won't move all this stuff down. All right. Uh, yeah, so this actually is a calculator question for the next part. Notice this, though, okay? I'm going to compute, I'm going to compute this value by hand. So how am I going to do that? Let me just start by trying to write it out. 8 plus 3 over 8. And let me just kind of imagine, if I plug in 16... 0.01, I'm going to take 16 away, so I'll just be left with 0 0.01, and so what is that? That's 1 over 100. And, yeah, so that's what it is. But I guess I'm not as smart as I thought, because I still need a calculator to get a decimal. Let's hope I don't have an embarrassing web page up. I don't. Let's go to Google. Uh, or we could use Wolfram Alpha, if you'd rather. So what's the number that we cared about? I think it was 8 plus, is it 3 over 8? I believe so. Is that right? Um, yes. And so that's actually 800 on the bottom there. 3 over 800. And that turns out to be, it gives you more decimal places than you ever cared to know, 8.00375. Let's make a note of that. 8.00, and now I'm probably going to write the wrong thing, but I think that's what it was. Um, okay, so I have to compare that to 
f of 16.01. How do I do that? I just use this original function. So let me see on my calculator what 16.01 uh, to the 3 fourths power is. So 16.01 to the 3 fourths. Oh, I'm not writing anything. 16.01 uh, to the 3 fourths power. And what is it? It's 8.00375. Good gravy, that approximation is just dead on. And so I guess I should have looked at more digits because they eventually disagree. Um, because we did the approximation for a nonlinear function, so they can't be the same. But it's really, it's really right. Actually, you can see that this last digit 5 was a fudge. So great. And so we did part B. And now I think we should move all this stuff down because part C is starting with something kind of completely different. So let me get my mover tool and push it down. My computer is starting to wheeze a little bit. Okay. All right. So part C. Um, find the differential. Let me remind you the formula for the differential. The differential dy is defined to be f prime of x times dx. Okay, and so of course this is the function, right? f of x is otherwise known as x plus 1 to the minus 1, because that's what this is. So a quick check of my derivative skills tells me that the derivative is the negative 1 comes down and becomes a negative 2 and now the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the stuff inside but that's just 1 and so I'm done dy is equal to a negative x plus 1 to the negative 2 times dx and that's just all there is to it can rewrite this as, in a nicer way as minus dx over x plus 1 squared. And okay, so that is going to come in handy because part d is about dy. So it's just saying that why don't you check what it is when this is the input and, and this is dx. So okay. Um, when those things are true, then on top I get 0 0.01 and terrible, straighter line. And on the bottom I get, you plug in 1 and so this is just 4. And my math skills tell me that since this is 1 over 100, what I'm really looking at here is 1 over 400. And I even know what that is as a percent, because it, I mean, as a decimal, because it should be like a quarter of a percent, right? So what is a quarter of a percent? Uh, zero, zero, two, five, I believe. It's like a quarter of one percent. And great, so that's it. That's the end of the question.